Hello, and thanks for joining me. Today we're dealing with a YouTuber named Graham Jaycock, who until recently focused his videos on music. He plays the piano in front of his camera, he's actually pretty good, but recently he decided to try his hand at Christian apologetics, and in a very angry, very rambling way. I have to say that anyone who buys into the angry atheist stereotype need only look at this guy's videos. This particular video I'm responding to today is entitled, I demand every single atheist to judge me as a person, verbally slash written form. My first thought was, there are hundreds of millions of atheists in the world and who the hell is this guy to make demands of every single one of them? So I left a comment to that effect on the video without watching it and went on with my life. An exchange of comments followed, without a great deal of interest or effort on my part and without my ever actually watching the video. My comments were based solely on the video title and on his subsequent comments to me. The repeated theme in his comments to me were his demands that I give him more time than I thought he was worth. And the common theme in my comments to him were, No, you go on, you enjoy yourself, your work doesn't affect me. I don't think he likes hearing that. At one point I realized that he was employing presuppositionalist logic, charitably so called, and so I gave my standard reply, which is TOAST! It went over his head, I suspect, but rather than ask for clarification, he went on spouting insanity. His most recent comment to me, as of this recording, states, You don't know me half as well as you ought. Out your money, I think he means put your money where your mouth is. As an unbeliever, you cannot do this. No one can touch me, not even the law. Which is a very disturbing thing to hear. So I decided that if he wanted me to take him on that badly, I might as well watch the video. Now... I want the atheists to judge me. But here is where the reasoning of atheists has really collapsed. Because you have just confessed that atheism or atheists don't follow something. Therefore, in order for an atheist to judge another individual, Every atheist has to judge that person. So every atheist has to judge my actions because one atheist could defend me. Because you see, atheism is not a community. They don't have a law. That is all entirely correct. Atheists do not comprise a single community. We can't. There are hundreds of millions of us in the world, each with our own laws, customs, and even beliefs. The only thing that all atheists have in common is not believing in any gods. So it's also true that there is no law that binds all atheists. And it's entirely possible that an atheist might defend you. I don't see how or why, but it's possible. It could happen. What all that entails is that if I judge you, I judge you on behalf of myself. Not on behalf necessarily of anyone else. It doesn't mean that I can't judge you. The same is true of Christians. If a Christian judges me, they do so according to their own interpretation of Christianity, which is not binding on any other Christian in the world. Because a law demonstrates that you are at least trying to discipline those who do wrong. Try and think. You know, this is what Andy Murray does on the tennis pitch. I don't know who that is, I'm not a tennis fan, but I think I get the point here. He judges himself and he points to his head. Go on, Andy, think. That's how you win points. Think. And this is what I am saying to atheists. Use your head. I want you to judge me. Because it exposes your faulty reasoning. Because you have to account for all the atheists that are living. No, I don't. As long as it's understood that the scope of my judgments don't extend beyond myself, I don't have to account for anyone beyond myself. And usually, at least with atheists, that scope is understood without having to be made explicit. With Christians, it can be more tricky, as a great many Christians claim to speak on behalf of God, whom they take to be the God of all Christians, which means if they're not careful, they can be misinterpreted, or for that matter, they could be correctly interpreted, as claiming to speak on behalf of all Christians. And you can't. You see, at least 
all the Christians are accountable to the church. Which church? Do you know how many denominations and sects of Christianity are currently in existence? Do you know how thoroughly and completely they contradict one another? So, I'm pleading with you, please, please judge me. But, you see, a court of law, I could be charged and appear in a court of law, but you've not substantiated the very law that you want to judge me under. If there's a law behind my judgment of you that you make unreasonable demands of atheists, then that law would be something like, it is unreasonable to make demands of every single member of a demographic consisting of hundreds of millions of people spread across the earth, each with their own lives, each speaking their own language, the vast majority of which have never heard of you and whose lives are not affected by you in any way. I am confident that, absent an ulterior motive, every rational person on earth would accept this proposition. Because isn't it true that you condemn your very own precious judges when they make sentences, when they, uh, when they conclude their sentencing, you get very upset, but judges are only following what is written in your precious law. This gives me another reason to worry that you are off your rocker here. You speak of your precious judges and your precious law. There are only a handful of places on earth without judges and without law, and I don't believe that you live in any of them. You are subject to the law of the land. If you violate that law, you are subject to being judged by the judges who have been duly installed to enforce that law. Do you think that you're special? Do you think you're above all that? Maybe you're speaking not of law and judges in the legal sense, but in a theological sense. In which case, atheism doesn't have judges, it doesn't have a law that's binding on everyone, and it certainly doesn't pass sentence on anyone other than I sentence you to not be taken seriously by me personally. That's the only sense in which atheists judge anyone. Assuming you're not making any kind of threat to persons or property in your videos, and I'm going to be charitable and assume that the law can't touch me isn't a threat, we don't have any jurisdiction over you, and even if you were making such threats, in order to have jurisdiction, we would have to be installed judges ourselves, according to not only the law of the land, but the law of the particular land where you live. When you speak of judging people, you seem to go back and forth as to whether you mean legally or not. When we speak of judging people, we speak only of appraisal. If you're not bothered by our appraisal, then that's fair. I'm certainly not bothered by your appraisal of me. But if that's the case, what the hell are you talking about? If you do not know your law, why do you want to make yourself accountable to it? You agreed to the terms and conditions. Oh wait, that was in the Bible, in, in the, the, the Jewish Hebrew Old Testament. There are too many metaphors here for me to follow. First you speak of the law, then you speak of terms and conditions, and now you're speaking of the Jewish Bible. Do you mean that we somehow agreed to the laws laid down in the Old Testament? You see, the nation of Israelites agreed to the terms and conditions. You never agreed to the terms and conditions, because if you had, boy... Don't call me boy. And you're right, I never agreed to what you would call the terms and conditions in the Old Testament. I don't believe any moral person currently alive would agree to those terms and conditions. You wouldn't be upset with what the judges concluded. What judges? What are you talking about? If only you had read the law. And you don't. You have not justified either the law or yourself. Okay, if you're speaking of the law of the land, then that operates just fine without me justifying it. If you're speaking of the Old Testament law, I couldn't care less about justifying that law. If you're talking about a law by which I judge you to make unreasonable demands, then, as I already said, that's self-evident. If you're talking about something else, then may I recommend an anger management course? Because your being pissed off at atheists is getting in the way of your ability to clearly communicate. You see, the very atheist that you socialize with, 
right? Because you are not governed by any values, you have to pick and choose. It's not true that I have no values. Among the values that govern me are reason, compassion, honesty, clarity, justice, and cordiality. And I may have chosen those values, but you did the exact same thing when you chose to be a Christian. More precisely, when you chose to be whatever denomination of Christian you are. You may not have voluntarily chosen to believe in God, but you did voluntarily choose to adopt whatever values you believe God wanted you to adopt. Personal, moral autonomy is not something you get to give up just because you're a theist. That very atheist could defend me. Now, that is irony. If an atheist does choose to defend you, that's not irony, that's pluralism. Something that is discouraged in many Christian communities, which is why I see it as a strength of atheism. So, Graham's obvious passion here is getting in the way of his ability to say what he means. And his argument, if he has one, is not very coherent. To the extent that it is the standard presuppositionalist, you can't justify your use of values or morals or whatever, then the standard response to presuppositionalists TOAST is what applies. To the extent that it is something else, I don't know what, and it doesn't really matter. I don't think I'll be engaging with this guy again, unless he seriously changes how he does things on his channel. I began this video with a judgment of Graham Jaycock, and I will end it with another one. He is not worth our time. If you like this video, please hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons. And if you want to share your own judgment of Graham Jaycock, leave your judgment in the comments below. It's been an exciting week here on the channel. As I record this, I am just about to hit 1,000 subscribers. By the time you see this, I may already be there. So thank you one and all for joining me on this incredible adventure. It's a great privilege to be able to spend time with you, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. I'm David John Wellman, and the rest is up to you.